This is the M1 uh, Air, actually. It's a 20, 80, 20, 37. It's in here for repair and uh, kind of see what's going on with it. So I actually want to show you guys a really interesting one. So again, we have it here and I have the board out. Uh, we have it, it's just something like this. It's a nice silver one. We did to take out the board. Board actually looks to be pretty clean for the most part, but I did notice something actually going on with it. So when we have this one here, um, we see that there is a problem with it and I'm not gonna be plugging the wrong one, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys something interesting. So we have a voltmeter here. Let's go ahead and just uh, please plug it in because it's without anything else. And we see what? We see it's about, well you guys are see it upside down. There you go. So it's almost five amps and then it hits about, it's almost five volts and hits about 0.3 amps. Sometimes it resets and then it does the same thing again. So I've reset my voltmeter a few times. So if you haven't noticed already, I'm gonna take it off. You see the other side of the port here. This is a removable port. And I don't know if you guys can actually see it here. There's some actual damage. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it actually under the microscope. It'll probably be a little bit better to see uh, what's going on here. So we take a look at it actually under the microscope and we can see that there is actually the trace line damage to uh, the USB-C connection. That's the one side and here's the other side port and if we flip it over probably going to be let's see if let's check out this side it looks like a little bit of a cut there and this one's much cleaner that's how it really should be looking like but this is what we're dealing with here so we're going to be showing it actually on this side and you can actually see the damage here obviously these traces are actually absolutely damaged it's really bad um, and This is really bad here. Now, luckily this is removable, but again, this isn't the actual main cause of it. Just swapping it out isn't actually gonna work because how these actually work, this is USB-C, and the problem with the USB-C, especially for something like this, especially on a laptop that does require a lot of voltage to come in there, there's a big problem with that because these are power lines as well as uh, data lines. Now again, the problem with this, this isn't just gonna be the problem here because if we do a replacement for it, you're still gonna have a problem. Um, we plugged it in the one that actually is working. But the major problem we do have, especially for MacBooks and for any other type of, uh, especially higher, higher power device, such as like any type of laptops that do have USB-C, the USB-C has a main issue, why? It's because it's not only is it just getting power in actually to the laptop itself here, um, what we're doing is we also have data lines here because you can also use what? You can use a dongle. Um, to plug in like USBs. You can also use it for display. So it's doing a few different things. It's doing data and it's also doing uh, power at the same time. Now, if you have any type of adapter or if you're struggling with it or you have something that's great, this is a great instance of it, is if you keep plugging in the charger and um, you, you pull it in and out and then eventually um, maybe there's some damage to the, the trace lines on the USB-C um, side of it where you do plug it in. Um, what it's going to be doing is that data line could be touching that power line or vice versa. Having a high voltage power line on a high bandwidth uh, data line is a really bad thing. So now we do have these USB ICs that are impacted for it. Obviously you can see it's right. This is where it's plugged in. Plugs in right there. Now on the other side you have two of these um, um, for that. Did that regulate a lot of different things. And if we actually go plug in we're going to see something really, really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. And I'm going to go to my screen capture. So I'm going to put this under a thermal cam and you can see one of the USB-C ICs are actually uh, getting hot and it looks like that there is some damage on it. Now it could be damage to the USB-C IC itself or it could be damage to the circuit, but most likely there, there is a problem with the USB-C IC because um, if you could see even the top one here, that one was the part that was damaged and it makes a little, lot of sense um, obviously that the top one over there would be damaged as well. Now most of the time for these you usually have to get both of these working. Um, for this uh, laptop to be working in general. So what we need to do first, we're gonna try to do an overflow on this USB-C IC. And then if that doesn't work or if there's still a problem with it, we're gonna replace it. Okay guys, uh, the recording didn't go through removing the chip. We really do apologize about that. Um, but this is what it looks like with the chip up. And you can see all the old solder balls that are left from the previous chip, and that's from removing it. Um, now what we need to do is we need to clean the surface so we can have a nice flat surface for a perfect connection between our board here and for a new 
chip to be put on there. So we're going to be cleaning it up. We're going to put some flux here. We're going to use some little bit of copper with our hot iron. And this is what it's going to be doing as we're pressing it. You're going to see um, the solder balls are going to be actually uplifted here. And it's going to clean the surface. And we need to make sure that surface is actually perfect and there's no old solder to interfere with the new solder or we don't want any um, connection problems whatsoever. We're also going to be having some alcohol here using a Q-tip. We're going to make sure we twist the Q-tip uh, properly so we don't get any uh, little strands of, I don't know if you want to call it hair or Q-tip hair. We don't want any of that there. So we're going to make sure this is clean properly. And we don't want to use a brush because it will actually scratch the surface. Now this is what it looks like um, with it totally removed. It looks really good. So now we're going to be putting on a new chip. We're just going to be putting some flux here. And then we just need to adjust uh, the chip accordingly to exactly the same way from it was before because it does matter. Uh, especially the shape does really make a difference there. So we're going to be going ahead and uh, putting it on here. And it should be pretty good. We use a lot of heat. And let's go ahead and test it out and see if it works. Okay, so let's plug it in. See, we're getting our 5 volts, and it went right to our 20 volts. And we're getting about, uh, oh, it's going over an amp. It's getting closer to 2 amps. Looks pretty good here, huh? Wait, we're not getting anything on the screen. All right, so I had to disconnect that screen. And I'm using another screen right now, right next to it, but it's connected. And we're getting an image. So it looks like they also have a bad screen. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys are watching this video on M1 MacBook Air A2337 Logical Repair. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We've got lots of videos doing liquid silver repairs, logical repairs, and uh, lots of other cool things on the channel. Uh, we show also pretty cool like hardware replacement screens, uh, keyboards, lots of other things if you're interested in that too. Basic software repairs, tech talks, anything you can really I think of we have uh, we're on lots of other social media platforms too if you're really interested in that check us out almost everywhere slap fix so see you guys next video thanks a lot for watching take care of yourselves bye